Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. So we're continuing on in our hadith about that purity is half of faith as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam mentioned. And in the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Salat nur. So we were talking about the prayer. That prayer is light. So the scholars, they mention <coughs> that this uh, nur is that the salat, the, the prayer or the light is that it, it, the, the prayer, it makes clear for us the, the, the path for the believer. It makes the believer's path clear. And it is a reason for making the heart comforted. And that also, that some of the scholars, they mention that the Salat Nur, that the, the prayer is light, is because it lightens the way for the believer. It gives him guidance. And it also makes light for him on the Day of Judgment. And that, as we know, uh, also by purifying ourselves, as the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned in a in, uh, hadith about that the day of judgment, the believer would be raised up and the places, the traces where he made the wudu, where he washed himself, will be bright on his face, on his arms, on his feet, and, and, and so forth, that they will be bright and light. And so, in addition to this, this hadith shows us that the prayer itself is a type of guidance and light for us. <clears throat> and that, as it was mentioned, Jafi Sahih ibn Hibam and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala an salat man hafif alayha kanat lahu nuran wa barhanan wa naja yawm al qiyama wa man lam yahfaz alayha lam takun lahu nuran wa la barhanan wa la naja this was related in ibn Hibam so in this hadith the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that whoever protects it, whoever guards their prayer, uh, then for him, for this individual, him or her, then they will have light. And they will have proof, barhan. And they will have uh, success on the day of judgment. But whoever does not pr pr safeguard their prayer, then for them there is no light. And there is no proof, you know, nothing that is in their favor, no proof for, in their favor. And there is no success. So the prayer, with the prayer, there's success. With the prayer, it, it helps us to protect us from the uh, evil deeds, especially the major sins. And the prayer, it helps us in bringing light in our heart. Light on our, 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 in our actions and light in our heart. Because... Any uh, person who guards their prayer, and if they are guarding it in totality, I'm not talking about just doing the ritual movements, but we're talking about they're perfecting the prayer by being humble and having a khushur. You know, they're focused in their prayer. And their heart, and they have uh, sakina, they have, you know, comfort in their heart, and they're, they're, they're going back and returning to their Lord. This person, you'll see the thamarata of this. You'll see the... The, the the fruit of their actions, of their prayer, that you see it in their actions. You see that they they that they, they have comfort in their heart, even if they're poor, even if they're going through such and such difficulty in their life. You see that the prayer it gives them a comfort. And that's the affair of the believer. Especially the believer who guards their prayer and they go to uh, the the masjid for the men especially that you'll find, and I find this in my personal life, that whenever going through all the difficulties that we face out in the world, we face difficulty with joblessness, some of us are homeless, some of us have difficulty with our spouse, some of us have difficulty with our children, some of us have health problems, but I found that with every difficulty that I was going through in my life, that daily prayer 
especially when I'm not distracted, especially when I really try to focus on my Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that I'm communicating with Him, that you feel that, that nur, you feel that light in your life. Because it's a way that you escape for that, pr that, that those pressures and the stress of the daily life. You have a difficult deadline at work. But when you take that five minutes out, even at your job, even if you can't go to the masjid, and you, you pray in your office or, you, or whatever in the boardroom or wherever you find the prayer that's clean and proper, you find that that gives you that five minutes that you took for your, to pray to your Lord and communicate to Him. You find a comfort in your heart in that you can go back to your job with a, a different mindset sometimes because you, you let all that stuff out and you took the time to worship your Lord, there's a type of comfort and strength that you find in the heart. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And so, the prayer is light. Also, the Prophet wasallam said in this hadith, وَصَدَقَ burhan," And that charity is a proof. And Shaykh, uh, Shaykh, uh, Uh, Sheikh Nasser bin uh, uh, Abdulaziz al-Shatri, half of Allah Ta'ala, one of the major scholars in Saudi Arabia and the Hayat al-Kibar al-Ulama, I believe, he is, um, he, he says in his explanation here, he says, وَصَدَقَ burhan, وَمَرَاد بِصَدَقَ بَدَلَ جُوزْ مِنَ mal. And he says that what is meant by charity is by giving a portion of one's wealth. And a group of the scholars, they mention that this was related to just the zakat, the obligatory alms tax that we pay as, as Muslims when you have reached the, uh, if uh, the charity has become an obligation upon you, meaning this, meaning the zakat, the alms tax. But uh, uh, another group of the scholars said, no, this includes any type of charity that you give, whether it be the zakat, meaning the alms tax, which you must pay upon your wealth, or if it is any type of charity that you do, any type of financial spending that you do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that you have your intention to please your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is also included here, that this is a proof for you. The Shaykh goes on to say, وَبَرْهَانْ أَيْ دَلِيلْ وَذَلِكَ أَنَّ المال محبوب للنفوس فمن بدل المال في طاعة الله عز وجل فهذا دليل على إيمانه على إيمانه وعلى أن أن قلبه قد وقر فيه إيمان جميل. so the shaykh goes on to say that that charity is uh, a proof and he goes on to say meaning دليل meaning proof and that and that is because that wealth is something that many of us or most human beings covet. Most human beings, they want and they desire wealth. They want more. If they have wealth, they want more. Even if they're a wealthy person. Even if they don't have any wealth, they desire wealth. Most individuals desire wealth. Okay? And this is something coveted to you. And if you take from that which is coveted, by yourself and you give it to others who are less fortunate to you and you spend it in obedience to Allah the Almighty then this is proof of your faith this is evidence that you have Iman that you have some faith and that it shows that there is faith in your heart so this is what is meant by uh, Burhan Wasadaka uh, Burhan that that charity is a proof. What is it a proof of? It's a proof that you have faith in your heart. Because when you are spending out of your, your wealth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially if your means are restricted, especially if you don't have much wealth, you may not, not, not have much, but you, you give that extra dollar, you give that extra few dollars, that extra whatever to someone who needs it more than you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then you'll be rewarded in this life as well as the hereafter. And that shows, that's evidence of your faith. That you have some faith. Because you're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And then the Prophet ﷺ said in this hadith, وَقَوْلُ وَصَبْرُ الْبِيَا And so he says, what is meant by patience is withholding or restraining oneself on those things that uh, that he is inclined towards. So this, is, you know, when we have desires towards something, when we are patient, that means we're restraining ourselves from those things that which 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 we desire. Okay, and that's a type of 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 uh, of light, as the Sheikh mentioned. And he goes on to mention that wasabr ala thalatha anwa. He said that sabr, patience, is of three types. Al awu sabr ala maasiyatillah. He said the first type is patience in uh, patience by restraining oneself from disobedience to to Allah. And the second type is sabr ala taatillah bi fi'li And the second type of patience is patience by being obedient to Allah. So the first type was by being patient, restraining some restraining yourself from disobedience. The second type is restraining oneself by doing those things which are by being obedient to Allah, by doing His commandments. Because sometimes that takes a restraint or a patience because maybe it's difficult for you. You know, it's hard for some people to get up in the morning and pray the early morning prayer, the Fajr prayer. And especially if it requires them going to the, to, to the mosque to pray because it could be cold and maybe it's difficult for their car. So those individuals who make that extra effort, they're being patient on being obedient to a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's another type of patience. The third type the Shaykh mentioned, sabr ala aqdar, aqdar and being patient upon the qadr, of being patient upon the divine destiny. Meaning, that knowing that everything that happens, and that has ever happened, is decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is all in accordance with the Lord's decree. So by being patient, meaning not complaining about the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Khayrihi wa shar. The good of it and the bad of it. Because sometimes things are difficult in our life. As we know, we're all, uh, we experience difficulty. Whether we believe or whether we disbelieve, we all have difficulty. Everyone experiences death. Maybe in their family, maybe in their uh, close friends or, or what have you. Everyone experience trials in their wealth. Okay, some people have difficulty in their wealth, some people have difficulty in their in their health. In, in, we all experience these difficulties. But knowing that this is a part of divine destiny, Allah decreed that for you as a test to see whether you are going to be patient with the decree or you are going to complain and say, Oh Lord, why me? Oh Lord, this is unfair. Oh Lord, this when you were complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about his qadr. We all have an inclination to complain. But how did you react when that patient when that, that difficulty befell you? When you did you say, Qadr Allah Ma Shafa'al, this is the, the decree of Allah and he does whatever he wills? You know, it's Allah's decree. I'm still going to strive my best to better my situation, but I'm not going to uh, beat myself up. I'm not going to uh, take my life because of this difficulty I'm experiencing. I'm not going to harm someone because of this difficulty. I'm not going to do the haram things because of this difficulty. That's being patient with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By staying within the hadoob, staying within the boundaries that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed for us and being pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last thing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned in this was he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Quran, hajjatan laq o alayk, that the Quran it is a proof for or against you and that we would free ourselves or we would uh, uh, destroy ourselves in the way we, in which we start our day. So if we start our day by reading and practicing the Quran, then this is for us. This is something for us. This will bear witness for us in this life because your life, your life you'll see the good and benefits of that in this life and in the hereafter. The Quran will uh, bear witness on your behalf.
or it will bear witness against you if you didn't practice it. So the ulama they explained that this has to do with practicing the Quran. And the way